So good afternoon, everybody. And I'm presenting our joint paper with Pascal Nicolai and Jochen Bardong from Corinthian Tech Research. And uh, this is an outline of my talk. This is an outline of my talk. And after motivation, I will present uh, experimental data for our test device. Then we'll discuss methods of analysis and how they were applied to analyze the spurious modes and wax cut of Langerside and some conclusions. So we will start from motivation. Uh, so delay lions are now widely used to um, in wireless, for wireless passive sensing of different quantities like pressure, temperature, and so on. And to reach the maximum sensitivity of such devices, it is necessary to separate the desired signal from uh, overlapping spurious signals. And uh, the number and type of, the, of these signals depend on the substrate material and geometry of the device. So our motivation was, first of all, to develop a systematic approach to investigation of spurious modes in so delay lines using a combination of experimental and theoretical methods. And by way of example, these methods were applied to a delay line on YX card of Langerside. Uh, this is our layout of a test device. It's rather simple, two IBTs with platinum electrodes, 50 wavelengths each. We deposited on LGS a substrate of uh, standard thickness 0.5 millimeters with center to center distance 65 wavelengths and length wavelength is 14 micron. So it's important that the sizes of our substrate were uh, large enough um, uh, so that the spurious responses caused by reflections from the substrate ages were negligible in our measurements. So this is a measured frequency response in a wide range from 50 to 650 megahertz. And uh, uh, the impulse response. Uh, this measurement data was finally transformed into the frequency time spectrogram. Uh, this type of signal representation displays the energy distribution over uh, delay times. Oh, sorry. Uh, over delay times. Sorry. I didn't use yet. Uh, and the frequencies. And uh, therefore, it is possible to separate and identify different propagating modes on this. Uh, spectrogram. For example, so signals propagate with a frequency 167 uh, megahertz, and we see the main uh, triple transit and five transit signals with delay time dependent on source velocity. And uh, uh, the waves propagating along the surface must satisfy certain relation between frequency and delay time, and their product must be uh, equal to um, distance covered by the wave in wavelength. So we can build the lines of uh, fixed propagation length, and the spurious modes, which do not belong to these lines, propagate obliquely. And we uh, can uh, identify them as uh, bulk waves. Uh, this is a slide just demonstrates how the spurious modes, which we can see on the spectrogram, affect uh, give, uh, ripples in the corresponding uh, intervals of delay time. And the initial spectrogram was compared with the spectrogram of device with suppressed SO signals. So we can see that SO signals disappeared. But we still have strong responses caused by propagation of bulk waves in our substrate. And uh, analysis of bulk waves started from the waves propagating along the surface. Uh, this is the uh, admittance calculated for platinum grating on YX cut of Langerside. The surreal part of admittance, which shows us bulk propagation losses. And we see that. Uh, and we see that uh, uh, cut of uh, slow shear, fast shear, and the longitudinal uh, bulk waves just start radiation at certain cut of frequencies are uh, dependent on uh, bow velocity along the surface. And uh, if um, if uh, ripples are added, so uh, uh, so the finite thickness of the uh, substrate is added, we can see in addition ripples. So to understand uh, the nature of different modes propagating in our substrate, uh, the structure of this mode was visualized. So here you can see the structure calculated at the frequency 170 megahertz. And though there is contribution of slow shear bulk wave, in general, it looks like a perfect saw. Uh, uh, for the fast shear bulk wave, we have different structure, and we will discuss it later. And uh, for the longitudinal bulk wave, we can see that this mode leaks into the depth. So let's return to the fast shear bulk wave, which is strongly radiated in wide range of frequencies. And we will try to answer why it happens. 
So we should look at uh, the cross-section of the slowness surface for bulk waves by the sagittal plane of our material. And uh, from this plot, of course, we can estimate easily our cutoff frequencies for slow shear, fast shear, and longitudinal bulk, bulk waves, which agree with the admittance plot. And for arbitrary angle theta, we can find point in vector, uh, directional uh, over this vector, which is always normal to the slowness surface. And we can see that due to specific shape of uh, fast shear bulk wave surface, uh, the energy must propagate mostly along three directions, along the surface and at 60 plus minus 60 degrees because of these flat intervals. And uh, if the wave propagates along 30 degrees, we can expect a strong interaction between these two modes because their velocities are close and because of this shape, we, uh, there is fast rotation of polarization angles around this direction. Uh, there is one more consequence of such shape of the slowness surface of the analyzed material. Uh, there is a concavity around x-axis, and therefore we can build uh, the composite bulk wave. This is a solution which consists of two waves with k vectors symmetrically up and down, but p vectors parallel to the surface. So such wave, if, if we look at this solution, uh, looks like quasi-bulk wave with amplitude modulating along the depth. And it just agrees with the uh, visualized structure calculated for this wave. Uh, such solution resembles guided plate mode, but it does not require reflection from the bottom. Therefore, it is detected by the output IDT. So we can see this mode on the spectrogram. It gives strong response. And we can see it also in a frequency response. It also gives us these modes. And uh, now let's proceed to analysis of obliquely propagating modes. Uh, this is schematic drawing of oblique bow propagation. So the wave uh, is reflected from the bottom and detected by the output IDT. And uh, the uh, length covered, distance covered by this uh, incident and reflected waves along the surface uh, depends on coefficient C, uh, which is an isotropic factor and which depends on uh, two angles. This, uh, bow propagation angle, and also the angle between the vectors k and p, which in general are not parallel to each other. So uh, simple cases when the wave propagates along the surface, c is unity. And if pointing vector is parallel to the wave vector, then c is uh, a reverse squared cosine function. And uh, this uh, slide shows the sequence of calculations which was used to analyze obliquely propagating waves. So first three uh, power flow angles were calculated for uh, slow shear, fast shear, and longitudinal bulk waves. Uh, then uh, they were transformed into rotation of point in vectors with flat intervals, which agree with the slowness surface of the fast shear bulk wave. Uh, then um, we, uh, they were transformed into an isotropic factor using this simple equation. And uh, finally, to delay time uh, versus tilt angle. Here, the distance covered by the wave along the surface was fixed to be 90 wavelengths. And uh, the resulting plot was transformed using, again, the slowness surface into the frequency versus delay time plot for three bulk waves, slow shear, fast shear, and longitudinal. And this plot was overlapped with the spectrogram. So we can see that uh, most of responses are just allocated around the lines which we found from the slowness surface. Uh, moreover, we can mark the point which uh, correspond to intersections of this line with the, slow, with the spurious modes, and then just make some reverse transformation and look uh, how they are transformed to delay time versus tilt angle, and finally to the slowness surface. So on the slowness surface, we see that uh, uh, spurious modes are confined in three intervals of frequencies. And also, they are confined around directions theta 0, uh, 30, plus minus 30 degrees, and plus minus 60 degrees, which agrees with our expectation based on the shape of the slowness surface. And it's important the positions of, the, of these furious modes on the spectrogram were found to be nearly independent on the substrate thickness, but very dependent on the anisotropy of our substrate. And if we look more carefully uh, on the 
uh, signals in this area. Uh, this is a frequent measured frequency response for different treatment of the bottom. So this is polished and this is roughly polished, uh, rough uh, treating. And uh, we can see that actually there are two signals here which interact with each other and the ratio between them changes with polishing of the plate bottom surface. And it agrees again with our simulations because we have two lines here which are nearly parallel and intersect in this region. And uh, this is a fragment of the spectrogram which also demonstrates that there is some kind of interference between uh, two different modes in this area. And conclusions, frequency response of the test saw device was measured in a wide frequency range and transformed into the frequency time spectrogram. And then a combination of numerical technique was applied to analysis of the observed modes in YX langosite and these modes were identified. And the developed technique uh, can be applied to analysis of spurious modes in delay line built on arbitrary substrate material uh, so that to see uh, how such mode can be reduced or suppressed. Thank you for your attention.